Monday mornings, we get started about 1, continue through to 5.30, and that means we're around for about 37 and a half hours each and every week. During that time, we have the pleasure of talking with many interesting people. And this morning, we're going to be talking with Edward. I think it was about 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Frank Edwards, the well-known news commentator, uh, told us about an incident that happened on Friday morning, October 3rd. It was about 3 a.m. in the morning when a freight train, number 91, on the Monon Railroad was southbound to the little town of Rossville. And he went on to describe to us what occurred. There was a sighting of about four unusual objects. Well, we talked with Frank yesterday morning about this. And I've been in touch with Frank just a couple of minutes before we went on the air again. And I understand that something rather exciting happened evidently this afternoon at Alamogordo. And, of course, you know that the Lorenzans are in Alamogordo, New Mexico, and they're also the people that had APRO, and APRO was mentioned in many of the newspapers recently. Uh, in reference to Carl Jung, and, uh, well, we'll find out more. Now, we're going to try to get a call through with Frank Edwards. He's now news director of WTTV in Indianapolis. And as soon as we get that call through, we'll find out what all this is, excitement is about. And it certainly must be a rather exciting uh, day. At least they had one in Alamogordo, New Mexico. We'll find out all about that in a moment. Let's find out what's happening out there. Hello, Frank Edwards. Long John, how are you? John, how are you tonight? I'm fine, thank you. What uh, happened uh, in Alamogordo? I got a call from Coral Lawrence on a little after 7 o'clock tonight. Yes. She, uh, at 8 o'clock, rather. She says that at 6 o'clock, their time, that's uh, Alamogordo time. At 6 p.m.? Yeah. Yes. Uh, that one of the children came in and uh, told them that there was something strange in the sky. And she and her husband went out, and the family across the street, Mr. and Mrs. John Romero, as I understood it, were already out watching this thing. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence went out and watched it, and they had a power of seven, had a pair of seven uh, power binoculars. Yes. It, it was, uh, according to her, a gigantic uh, cigar-shaped thing about nine miles west of where they were standing over the San Andreas Mountains which, as you probably know, are the mountains on the western edge of the Alamogordo uh, or the Holloman Air Force Base. She said the thing was not above, ten, not more than 10 degrees above the horizon. And uh, you could see it clearly, particularly through the binoculars. She said that the south, the, uh, south end of the thing, it was uh, lined up north and south, and the south end of it was slightly uh, higher than the uh, other end. And while they were watching it, uh, an intensely brilliant yellow light showed up on the south end of the object several times, flashed, and very, very brilliant, she said. And then uh, it appeared to be discharging some uh, dark objects from the north or lower end of the object. And they couldn't tell what they were because they were too small and too indistinct even in the seven power binoculars. But she uh, indicated to me that she didn't think they were uh, vapor or anything like that. Let me ask you this, Mr. Yes, sir. Do you think this has any connection with the uh, sighting uh, that you reported to me yesterday morning that occurred on Friday morning, October 3rd? Well, the, the, the uh, sighting that I reported, that sighting that I reported to you, was a much smaller object, John. Much smaller than the one that, the one that she saw today, uh -huh. because at a distance of nine or ten miles, as, this, as they estimated this one, uh, the object would be tremendous. She said that if they were under the impression that it was about the same size as that object which was photographed over Holloman Air Force Base last November. The one that appeared that, uh, on all the newspapers. All the news, yes. Yeah, and that, they estimated that, you know, to be possibly 4,000 feet in diameter. 4,000 feet. That was what the uh, Associated Press copy said on it. I, I, I very frankly, I, I don't remember the uh, the caption, but uh, gee, that, that's 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 a good size. Not that huge, but nine nine or ten miles away, you know, it would be short, there, but it still wouldn't be very big. But anyway, I just think she said was huge. Now they were watching it. They noticed tiny little flickering lights appear in. 
in a line along the lower edge of the object longitudinally, and then it began to move as though these these little uh, uh, lights were perhaps uh, portal flares or something. And it turned around and went westward. And altogether, they saw it about six minutes, Mrs. Lawrence had said. And then just as they wound up, her, one of the members of the party had been trying to call the control tower, and the control tower wouldn't answer its phone, which was very unusual. And then they noticed these jets taking off and going in the same direction this object went. Well, now, when you say the control tower... That's uh, the Holloman Air Force Base. Yes, I understand that, but they wouldn't answer the phone. Are, are you saying that poss- uh, that there's a possibility that uh, there was some jamming on the no, phone? No, no, what object? I'm... No, my guess is that they were already busy with it. You know, uh, they were already busy dispatching these planes. To chase and, it. And yes, and possibly watching the object themselves, and they were not interested in any phone calls. I see what you mean. Uh, that, that would be my interpretation of that angle of it. Now, I'd like to ask... Uh, uh, go ahead, continue. Well, I was just going to say that all the, the four uh, adults who were in this thing are all employees out there in this uh, uh, Air Force base, and they're all very competent and sound people. And... Uh, they're not zanies or anything like that. I wonder, Frank, if you can speculate for a moment. Uh, if you have any idea of why we have had so many sightings around Alamogordo, New Mexico, and not many uh, around New York City. I, I, I have no idea, John, and I've never heard anyone uh, speculate on that, although I've known a lot of people who have noticed that that is true, just as you pointed out. But I've never heard anyone uh, speculate as to why it might be true. Uh, getting back again to Alamogordo, Mexico, Frank, uh, isn't this the, the location uh, that Dan Fry speaks of in his book, you know, Dan Fry? The White Sand. Oh, White Sand. I'm yeah, it's way down the other yeah, end. I'm sorry. I was yeah, yeah, that's a very gypsum bed yeah. down there. But isn't it true that uh, uh, there's a possibility that uh, these unusual uh, craft, uh, uh, the unusual craft that is being sighted from time to time at Alamogordo, yeah. that our government may uh, may be testing something that they've recently developed? Well, yes, that's quite possible. However, these are so similar to objects which have been seen for the past 10 years, or 11 years at least, that if they've been testing them that long, they're certainly making no progress. And uh, they might as well quit and go back to bicycles. Right. With that kind of luck, Henry Ford would still be fixing bicycles. Thank you very much for giving me this information. Say, John, I've got a new uh, series uh, uh, called uh, Stranger Than Science, in which uh, it's a, a series based on my book, you know, Stranger Yes, sir. And what I wanted to say to you was it's only been on the market 11 days. We've got 24 stations that have already signed up for it. Wonderful. So I'm real happy about Good. that. Good, Frank. Wonderful. John, nice talking to you. Thank you very much. Watch out for the little green man. I certainly will. Nice talking to you. Bye-bye.